Greetings and welcome to Cosmo Tear. I spent an hour and a half trying to build a brand new uh, warmonger or hammerhead. It was terrible. I punched a wall and said a lot of bad swear words. So welcome to Cosmo Tear Grand Admiral, where I am in fact the Admiral. Expect more ships, more weapons, more stupidly designed things, and I'm currently testing the warmonger with two needless mock. 203 and 02. They cannot jump, but they exist to do as I tell them to. Or else. What does that mean? It means look forward to transports, fighters, destroyers, maybe better designed frigates, because I absolutely hated my last ones. And we are going to crush the end game. Interest is dying down. I see all you people no longer watching, but we are going to build the greatest bloody fleet in existence, or by God, we will die doing so. Will we die doing so? We'll probably end up dying doing so. Doing dying so? Dying doing so. So. But does that mean good things? It probably does not. So yeah, we are straight up going to be doing more combat field testing fleet style. Or we're going to block our own ship. We're going to do that instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're about to lose. So it's still going for this reactor. So yeah, that's why I've started to change up things. Are either of you two going to shoot at the enemy yet? Thank you. That's still getting through. Yeah, shields need to be done. I am the, I am very good at combat tactics. I am very good at fighting games. I am very good at building empires. What I'm not good at, and it's been painfully apparent this entire time, is building good capital ships. I am good at multiple groups. I am not good at singular ships. So this has been an exercise in absolute futility. So I'm going to be switching up what I'm doing. We are going to be getting a shielded combat ship up and running. It will be a support transporter ship. Then we're going to start getting in frigates and destructors. Everything is going to come up Millhouse and beat him to death with sheer unending numbers. Will this win me anything? It better bloody win me something. But yeah, views are dropping down. Welcome to Grand Admiral with the Grand Admiral. The first stage of the Grand Admiral Grand Admiral is bringing in ships I know have improved in combat effective, like the Bombercraft N Mark II. These are nuclear bombers. I didn't use them very much because in the end it got quite tough. The Fightercraft Mark VI, highly effective point defence. It's also very annoying at bringing down enemy weapon systems. I could put some lasers on that, bring it up to six man crew, and send them into the rear of the enemy. So we're going to bring in some fighter craft Mark II. You see where this is going? Some of you already recognise the style and designs. Yes, we are bringing back the golden oldies and the classical classicals. What does that mean? Probably a lot more death, to be honest. To be completely and totally honest, an awful lot more death. But we need to bring it back. We also need to get a lot more reactor components, the enriched uranium. We do have some. We also have our trusty pet asteroid. But we're going to be building, growing, expanding. We have a storage ship over here, which will be turned into an actual storage ship. Give me a second to go and borrow ideas. I'm going to go look at the carrier for Homeworld. I want to copy that. The whole carrier for Homeworld looks bloody amazing. So I've built something absolutely hideous, but we now have a transport ship. So it's not the best looking thing in the world. I actually need to paint it and all that. And honestly, the, the front needs to be done. We have the beginnings of a transport ship. I've not copied the... Uh, thing entirely because I want it to be my own style of design and obviously that's kind of hard to do if I copy someone else's so I've got the original carrier the big fat one I've got a few styles of design from it but we're going to start doing a little bit more a little bit more awesome but we have the beginnings of the carrier which also has a mining laser on the side obviously it's connected to a bit more here and there but we have the beginnings of carrier alpha and so begin of the run okay now we to start bringing in more ships, more supplies, more everything. Maybe not over here. So let's gather the fleet. I've altered just a teensy tiny bit more because I still don't like it. Like obviously it's not complete by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't know what to do with it. But we have our basic carrier slash mining ship. Obviously it's going to take time. And it requires a lot more crew than it should, purely because I can. So this might, in fact, be an actual carrier vessel. You know, it grabs supplies, it salvages the dead. And, um, yeah, grabs supplies, salvages the dead, and then builds ships. So we might actually put more crew on this thing. 
Of course, we have to put some reverse thrusters on it, because apparently it's not good going forwards. Coolio. Coolio indeedy. Hmm. One thing I'm probably going to do is make it bigger. So it's going to become a bigger ship. I might double it in size, see how it goes. Right now, of course, it's a bit small. Because as you can see from the other ships, the needlers are about the same size as it. However, we're still bringing in ships. Let's see what else we can bring, which is ship shape. Hopefully ships. They should be bloody ship shape, shouldn't they? Another thing you'll be needing, and this is important mainly for me, is a troop transport. Obviously, you could just have a ship with all the crew, and it'd be absolutely cool. But if we are going full on Grand Admiral, we need an actual ship with personnel. Maybe personality too, we'll see how it goes and how it is after the first date. But personnel are going to be where we are at. So we are straight up grabbing a ship full of the crew. Is that important? Yes, very much so. The crew are going to be where we need them to be. So we've got a big, this one is holding 100 people, we are full on doing this. Is it going to work? Hopefully so. So it's going to be a massive wing of infantry held in the centre bay of a kind of a hammerhead style design with a tail based support system at the rear. Some of you may know where this is from because literally I just destroyed the ship. So in the end what we get is something which looks a little like this. It's obviously not uh, fully complete because I'm still not entirely sure how it should look but we now have a troop transporter, which is troopy and transporty. As you can see, it's a certain kind of style. I like this kind of style. I'm probably going to fill it up and do more. It's a similar style to this. It's obviously a little bit more stunted. And the tail's a bit more... How do I say this? Weird looking. Purely because this is a straight down the central line. If I did it a 3x3, I could have used a smaller tail. Instead, it now looks absolutely monstrous. In fact, I may put a three-person thing on here purely so that I can just make it look like I like it. Give me more of a second. Okay, I've um, scrapped the transport design for now purely because it's been like 20 minutes. I'm still gathering resources for it. I am currently very poor. So this might gain a bit more resources and uh, troop deployments on it. So I can obviously mine more right now, of course. The mining laser only has so much energy. I've also temporarily built a steel smelter on it, so I can smelt some steel. That's going to require a little bit more time and or the effort. But now we're actually producing resources to produce more ships. Everyone goes, why don't I sell more resources doing this? I don't like uh, making resources to sell resources. Everything I make is going to be used to build more vessels. The war will grow, the ships will grow, I will own this sector. Also, I keep saying I'm going to start a war with the locals. I'm going to start a war with the locals. I'm not a big fan of the fringe. We're going to go wipe out the fringe. They exist here. They will be my meat and veg. Of course, I need to get some better ships for that because I'm still on Grand Admiral. And their ships are more than mine, more powerful than mine, and hit harder than mine. So losses will be inevitable. How inevitable? Super inevitable. So let's get that going, I guess. That'll be cool. That'll be doom. So outside of this transporter not being that useful, because I literally cannot build it, because it needs like a thousand resources. What else do I need? I've got the beginnings of the needlers. I've obviously got this ship, but I'm taking troops off of it. I actually need a good frigate. Now, my previous frigates were diagonal-based, and they weren't exactly the best. They were okay at combat, but they were not good enough at actual movement. They basically got stuck behind the enemy, they got stuck on the enemy, they didn't have enough side raised maneuverability. Diagonal ships uh, can bear, bring more guns to bear, but they aren't exactly the most maneuverable drift or sideways. So they have issues that way. So I could, god damn it, could bring them back, but I might have issues. So let's see what else we can do, because right now this is still my main ship and now I don't have enough troops on it to be useful. Which, of course, is going to be a slight problem. So as you can see now, this thing is now firing absolutely terribly. Half the engines cannot be manned. The missile launchers will be in trouble. I still want to man a good missile launcher system, so that will have to be a thing. So my options are going to be increasingly hope for the best-ish. God, that thing moves fast, doesn't it? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hope for the best. Now, if I can turn this thing into a missile launcher only system and have the uh, defensive ships fight, that might be much better. This might become a missile support platform. 
But that will of course require these guys to be much better at their jobs. And that has never been the case. So a howitzer can insta-kill any ship of the smaller variety. There we go. So these are just going to come straight round the side, hit them in the, hit them in the hardest uh, positions possible, which will be the soft underbellies. Go fizzy beams. First beam in. Second beam in. So I'm debating moving the beam further forward, if I'm honest, but I don't really want to. For the simple fact that the more in the front it is, the worse it's going to be for us. But every kill we get is more money for the horde, the horde for the fleet, and more ship parts for the fleet. The fleet will grow. Let's get this going. The transporters come under heavy attack by a Valkyrie. They usually take people to he to um to say to heaven. A kind of heaven. Unfortunately, it might be taking these people to heaven. Valhalla will require their sacrifice. Hopefully, not too soon. But outside of that, we have a few more issues because obviously I wasn't prepared. We're going to straight up kill this thing now. Okay, you hit that. You, you're doing quite good as a, as a uh, support ship, actually, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you're just in the way. You're just doing okay. So, yeah, my ship has a habit of ramming the enemy till they or me are dead. Which honestly isn't the best. It's not the best indeed. But, you know. If I can't do it, why? I don't know. I have no ending to that sense. If I can't do it, why? Oh, that's now stuck. One good thing about having these kind of beam. Oh, straight through, straight through, straight through. Oh. Turn, 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 turn. We're going to lose the reactor. Come on. So yeah, side thrusters might need a bit more work. Okay, we're now taking hits here. Come on. There we are. So yeah, there's still issues with this ship. This is literally why I'm going back to how it used to be. Because this is taking significant damage. And that means I've lost even more crew. Crew losses are getting quite significant. Oh, several of my crew just died in the space. Yep, crew losses, including me doing that, are quite significant. I've just killed some more of my crew. That's what we call a problem in the trade. But, you know, we're still gathering resources, so fair's fair. I might move a reactor up to the front. That is fine. I mean, it's not really. If anything, we don't really need a reactor here. We need, if anything, we need this reactor here. And we need these two down here. But if I do that to there, it doesn't look right because, you know, it's not a 2 by a 3 by 3 it's a 2 by 2 It makes things look weird. But yeah, that 50-50. Okay, carry on growing, expanding. Let's get more forces on the front line. And slightly less people killed because of my level of incompetence. Although, that uh, ship I was building of that transport, because I've lost visual range on it, is now classified as abandoned. Do not leave a ship half built with no crew on it. It becomes abandoned. I am slightly more buggered now. Yes. Oh, another ship is... Oh, good, 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 good. I thought another ship was about to hit us. No matter crew we're losing, it'll be great. So, yeah, we need to sort these guys out. They're obviously having a few technical issues. The biggest one being... I kind of need this to be at the front. But if I do that... Then it starts becoming a bit more of an issue because there's no defences on it. You see? If I put it there... It just becomes a problem. Like that. See, that's still an issue. Still a big issue. I don't know. Could this be the new needle design? It doesn't look right there is the problem. It just doesn't look right. The other needles were sharper, slicker. This now looks like a spoon. 
It's more of a spork than a needle now. Are these my sporks? Ah, I may have built a spork. Alright, welcome, spork. No, I'm not calling it a spork. That's my... It's Mark 3, 0, 4 now. Okay, the Mark 3 might be a new combat target. Let's bring them in. So, yeah, let's field test the spork. Come on, field test of the spork. Okay, so Hunchback, that is railgun and missile based. Get a shot off, get a shot off. It's going to leave. It left. All right. Field testing is going to take a bit longer. My field test has left me. It's broken my heart and left. Oh, well, we'll, get, we'll catch it. We'll catch it. It looks like my field test is currently engaging these. Because different pirate factions engage each other. Oh. Leave, 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 leave. Yeah, they're definitely trying to kill each other. So, my target is currently over there wiping out another group. In fact, it says one of two has been killed. That means it's killed one of two for me. Thank you very much. Target. I'll go not. Yeah, Renegade Pack Bounty. Typical. Okay. Everyone get in the way. There we go. Field test the spork. The fork is not field testing very well. To be fair, out of all of them, it's got the better chance. To, yep. It's got a better range and so on now, so it's got better visual, so it can literally start, you know, firing while manoeuvring. So I think the Spork is actually a better design, but it's also significantly weaker. Much significantly weaker. So that's going to be an issue. Not a big issue. Oh, everyone back in. But it's still an issue we need to sort out. Now, I'm also thinking, and this is a big one, because I'm using tractor beams, having tractor assault ships. I don't know how they would look. I think the pirate ship is dead. Is it badly damaged? The engines are gone. Okay. Stay here. Field test the spork. Spork field test engaged. Either way, a field test, you're just having it move around. The other one's had issues moving around. Being powered up quite nicely. Little eight man crew can easily powered up. Good old Spork! Okay, move around. Hit it in the rear of the gear. Yeah, I think the spork design is much nicer than the needle. But I'd be damned if I'm calling it a fleet of sporks. I think that really will ruin my credibility. I'm not getting that many views now. Dad will kill me. That will genuinely kill all credibility I've ever had. I never want to have. Anyway, the spork is definitely effective. I'm still saying it. The, the, the needle of Mark III is definitely effective. Let's carry on carrying on. Oh, 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 that's a problem. My target has just come back. The hunchback is back. The hunchback is hunchbacked. Bring in the needle up. Bring in the needle up. Okay, the Mark 3s I definitely think are better. Obviously, the Mark 3s are not designed for any kind of close range engagement. They're still high speed. Missiles have been fired. Missiles have been fired. I think it's trying to go for them. Crew is still trying to get back in the ship. Go, go, go. Railgun hit the, hit the claw. Okay, you are literally in the way of everyone else. Go to go there. Go to there. Okay, you're going up to here. There we go. Yeah, see, this one isn't able to fire. Although it did just take a major hit. No, it didn't. It's just on fire. Okay. See, the railguns are working effectively against my ship. The laser beams are working effectively against them. See that? Oh, that was kind of nice. Got the arms gone. Anyway, field testing suggests that this variant has better mobility in the firing. Obviously, it doesn't really matter when they're actually in position. They can just fire, but if you look carefully, you can see slight movements. I mean, they start to lose targeting 
and they just stop going. So yeah, the the spork is effective. The spork is effective. Boop. Okay, good. Okay, grab all of this. A spork, fe a spork testing has been done. The Mark III is now going to be enabled. This will bring me more power than you could possibly imagine. I hope. 